Perhaps no living person is more recognized from the Guinness Book of Records than Sandy Allen of Indianapolis, Indiana. She's been listed in the book for almost a quarter of a century as the tallest woman in the world. At seven feet, seven and a quarter inches, Sandy struggles every day to fit into our world, a world she outgrew a long time ago. She was never destined to be the world's tallest woman. Instead, it was an accident at birth that sent Sandy Allen into the Guinness Book. Forceps used to pull tiny six pound, five ounce Sandy through her mother's birth canal, pressed on her pituitary gland and a tumor formed. The tumor squeezed growth hormones from the gland at a startling rate. The bizarre chemical order Sandy's tiny body was forced to obey, start growing, keep growing, never stop growing. By the time I was three years old, I was already as big as a six or seven year old. By the age of 10, I was about six feet, three inches tall. And then when I got to be 14, I was seven one, had to play a little bit of basketball because the gym teacher threatened to block me out of his head if I didn't, but I wasn't very good. Sandy didn't know yet why she was different, but she knew it hurt a lot. I might come home from school crying or saying, I'm not going back anymore, you know, because of the kids teasing me. I didn't have any more than maybe two close friends the whole time I was going through high school. Never got to go to any of the proms or the dances. I mean, what boy's going to take a girl to a dance that's two feet taller than he is? Good afternoon, all you short people. How are you doing today? In 1976, the 21-year-old, painfully shy country girl suddenly had her world turned upside down. That was the year Guinness first listed then seven foot five inch Sandy as the world's tallest living woman. I've been asked everything from how's your sex life to how big is your toothbrush, so nothing comes across as a surprise. It sounds like a corny line, but getting in the Guinness book really did change my life and my personality somewhat. And it sort of helped bring me out of my shell. Instant fame brought some of the world's most bizarre business propositions to Sandy. She's modeled as a bride for Japanese television and acted in films like Fellini's 1976 production of Casanova. I've had the opportunity to literally travel all over the world. I've been to the East and Thailand and Taiwan and to Japan where everybody was really overwhelmed by my size. She said no to a contract with Ringling Brothers, as well as an emphatic no to Larry Flint, who wanted Sandy to pose nude in Hustler magazine. They could have given me 15 million and I wouldn't have done something like that. <laughs> Today at age 43, seven foot seven and one quarter inch Sandy lives on her own in a tiny one bedroom apartment on the east side of Indianapolis. Her head nearly scrapes the eight-foot ceiling. Each day, she struggles with the unfortunate side effects of giantism, poor circulation, arthritis, and curvature of the spine. She also must contend with appliances and conveniences that are as inconvenient for her as dollhouse furnishings would be to us. It's not a crippling arthritis. I'm, I'm sure when I get older, it might get worse, but... Uh... For right now, I can live with it as long as I take a little bit of medication, cortisone, to, to help control the pain. Sandy does a daily regimen of exercises to keep her legs strong. But with each passing year, walking is becoming more and more difficult. Now, I use my wheelchair, but I'm not bound to it. I mean, I can get up and walk, but I need my walker for some support because my leg muscles are not real, real strong, so I have to be really careful. Being careful doesn't mean being a recluse. <laughs> Sandy believes her one-of-a-kind life experience has given her something of value to share. Can I just use you a little bit as a leaning post? So, Mr. Burke, tell me, how's the weather down there? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Sandy has no problem holding an audience in the palm of her hand. The toughest thing for me was when I was growing up, because everybody wanted to make fun of me just because I was tall. And uh, that didn't 
fit in with what everybody else was regular size. Basically, the message I try to get across to the kids is that it's OK to be different. Whether you're tall or short or fat or another color or handicapped in some way, it just seems like if you don't fit into the, quote, norm, then you're more or less sort of an outcast, which is what I was when I was growing up. The world's tallest woman has one regret of note, a regret that sums up her message of tolerance. Sandy wishes she still had the power to reveal her full height. If I could just get somebody that could do some surgery or something on my back so that I can stand up straight. I don't want people to think I'm stooping because I'm ashamed of my size because I'm very proud to be this tall. Sandy, thanks for letting us share your remarkable story. We'll be right back.